Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about something that I've had a bunch of people in the comments ask me, and I get this question time and time and time again, and now hopefully I can send them a link to this video and it will answer all their questions, or at least most of them. Um, injector sizing for your Cummins common rail. Now, <clears throat> I don't quite understand how the power stroke, like, nozzle size with CC works, so I'm not gonna speak on that. Um, the Duramax stuff, any of the V8 stuff, like I know it's a little bit different. Um, like 100 overs in a Duramax will do way more power than 100 overs in a Cummins, so I'm not even gonna pretend to understand that. We'll just move on from there. Um, this is specifically for your 5967 Cummins common rails. Um, everything for a 6.7 is very similar to a 5.9. I usually just have a little bit of a 6.7 correction factor for the horsepower. So we'll cover that kind of towards the end. But starting off your 5.9 common rails, this is excluding the California common rails, sorry, that 235 horsepower abomination they put. You're going to, <clears throat> in this scenario, assume that we have the proper CB3 pumps, we have the proper air, we're just gonna bang out the injector sets. Um, stock, 500, 525 horsepower, it's about all you're gonna get. And that's on a healthy set. Um, if you guys remember when we first got the 07 quad cab, did like 460, because those injectors were so tired. Um, from there, you have your 15% overs. Those will usually get you into the 600, 625 range. From there, your 30% overs, those will get you uh, right around 675, maybe 700 on a generous dyno. Um, your 45% overs, those are going to put you right around 750. Um, as we discussed, that's why we went with those in the mega cap. Your 60% overs, those are going to get you 825, um, 850. Uh, if you have some companies still offer an 80% over, those are usually like 900, 950, again, max pulse width. Uh, your 100 overs, those will go anywhere from 1,000 to 1,100 on fuel only. I know that they can go more on nitrous, but we're just doing fuel only. Your 150s will usually put you right around 1,250. Again, I have done 1,300 fuel only on a set of dynamites, but as a rough estimate, 1,250 is a pretty safe spot from there you have your 200 percent overs those will usually do about 14 1450 horsepower um at your 250s is where 250s is when some companies start doing body mods um i know like dynamite is going to make you fill out a custom injector form for a super mental at that horsepower <clears throat> and you start getting the body mods where it's no longer just the size of the injector nozzle it is also now like the control valve inside the injector um i know like sns calls them like the red man's uh extra g i think they're just called body mods dynamites body mods i assume flux does body mods but um you start to run into a very huge deviation um and for example uh like a 300 percent over of extra g's I'm not sure if you can make 2,000 horsepower with those. Um, on the 300% overs we got from Dynamite, we made 2,100 horsepower, um, and we weren't leaning on them too, too hard. Yes, they were past the pulse width that they wanted me to run, but when you gotta make a number, you gotta make a number. So um, once you get to the body mods, your best bet is to talk to whatever company you wanna purchase them from or through, and they will guide you. So if you call our shop and talk to David or I, we're gonna ask you how you wanna use the truck, how much power you want that truck to make, and who's tuning it. And depending on those three answers, we will direct you in the correct path of choice, whether that's a dynamite injector, an XG, SNS, Flux, whoever. Um, <clears throat> I would say up until a 200% over, most of those companies are all going to be very similar in sizing, um, so to speak. Uh, and that would be uh, SNS, Exergy, uh, Flux, 
and then obviously our favorites, Dynamite Diesel products. Um, once you get to the body mod, again, all bets are off. And I'd love to, I mean, if you guys have specific questions, you can always message me on Facebook or Instagram. I do try to get back to y'all. I usually answer you guys right before I go to bed because um, that's the only downtime I really have. Uh, so if you don't get an answer for a day or two, like don't take it personal. Um, I get a lot of messages every day. Um, now that we've covered that with a six, seven, I usually just multiply the horsepower by about 5% because that's about how much larger a six, seven injector is than a five, nine stock for stock. And that's where those percentages come from guys. So if a stock injector flows 20 liters per minute, okay, a hundred percent over is going to flow 40 liters per minute. A 200% over is going to flow 60 liters per minute. A 300 will flow 80. That's where those numbers, percentage overs come from. Um, and realistically, liters per minute or mm cubed, which is the fuel delivery, is really the more accurate way to do it. However, it's been in our industry for so long, percentage over is not going away. So we just learned to deal with it. Um, and that's why you're going to call a shop that is a good dealer. <clears throat> or a reputable dealer for the brand that you want to buy from and we get you taken care of and we speak the lingo I make sure you guys get a set that's right for you and how you want to use the truck now for your cp 3s uh, stock 5.9 550 I've seen them clip 580 I'm sure there's somebody that's done 600 six sevens usually 600 625 again I'm sure somebody's done more these are just rough roundabout figures your 10 mil pumps, uh, we sell the fleeced ones. Those are good for about 750, 800. Your 12 mils, you have XRG, BD, uh, SNS, Dynamite. Um, obviously, we sell a lot of the Dynamite ones, but all companies make a good 12 mil pump. Um, fuel only, again, 1,000, 1,100 horsepower, very doable. Then you get to your 14 mil pumps, XRG and SNS. I have zero data on the SNS ones. If somebody does drop it in the comments, I'm happy to hear it. Um, I've never ran their pumps. I've just always preferred the XRG with the billet back housing and the different mid pump in the CP3. Um, I feel like they have the better product on the market currently. Um, I have done 1800 horsepower multiple times, fuel only with one of their pumps. And we've done four smacks at 2100 horsepower plus on uh, single 14 mil pump through that <clears throat> you have your dual pumps basically take whatever each stock pump is worth add them together and that is a very good number two 12 mils 2000 2200 two 10 mils 15 1600 two stocks 1100 maybe 1175 so again um six seven cp3 swap in your five nine I don't know if it's really worth it. I guess if you're looking for like 50 horsepower, it's not a bad idea. The bag of parts kits, throw them in the trash. They're not worth the packaging that they come in. I've tried it, never had good luck with them. Throw them in the trash. The only stock modified CP3 pump that I like is the Fleece CP3K. It allows for high fuel or full fuel delivery at high RPM. That is a pump worth putting your money into if that is a pump you're needing. Um, from there, we have 5967 connecting tubes. Realistically, most people that are buying a Bosch tube or a rebranded Bosch tube is going to be 6-7 base. They work fine. Once you get past that 15, 1600 horsepower, it's kind of a split house on whether you run the edge filters or not. I've done it both ways. Um, for any truck that I drive a lot on the street and I'm constantly putting fuel in, I will usually run the edge filters on like the UCC truck. I do go no edge filters on those. Um, I would talk with whoever's building your injectors at that power level and you guys have that discussion. Um, that theory has flip flopped many times, even in my own career uh, in this industry. So I I'm not gonna get into it. I do know no edge filters do flow more. <clears throat> However, it makes your injectors very susceptible to damage. So from there, the last thing, 5.9 rail, 6.7 rail. Um, at the end of the day, guys, 
up to about 1500 horsepower from the data I have seen, it doesn't seem like they make a difference. You could do either one very easily. Um, once you get past that, uh, there is a argument that the plenum of a 6.7 rail is larger. Therefore, as the injector opens, because there is a larger plenum available, the rail pressure drop is not as significant. I can understand that. Um, I have kind of just like more of a spiteful side of myself, which is why I still have a stock 5.9 intake horn, stock 5.9 grid heater, which is funny because it's not even hooked up. I just put it in there. Um, and I have a 5.9 rail on the quad cab that we've continuously made 2,000 horsepower with. Um, and it's really just, I don't know, it makes people mad or it makes some people laugh. Um, I've had a couple guys tell me I, I'm leaving two, 300 horsepower on the table with one of those intake horns. So maybe one day. Um, if you want to put a 6.7 rail on your 5.9 truck, go for it. I, I'm done having this argument with people like... Knock yourself out. Um, the only thing I'll tell you on a 6.7 rail, put the isolators on. Um, for me, once I get past like the quad cabs level of like 2,000 horsepower, like when we were trying to go for 3,000, um, the 6.7 rail to me is worth it. The reason why I like the 5.9 rail is it's a lot easier to work on in the truck, especially with the 5.9 intake horn that goes with it. It's just easier to work with. Um, the lines don't seem to break as long as you get the updated number four. Um, so I prefer that rail for most things. Now, if you have a 6.7 truck, just run the 6.7 rail. It'll be okay. But if you have a 5.9 truck, like I know GDP makes the mega rail conversion or whatever. Like unless you're well into the four digits, like congratulations, you wasted a lot of money that could have gone to other things that make your horsepower a lot higher. Um, anyway, guys, uh, after this video, we're gonna get back to working on the 07. Um, just needed a, wanted to put this tech video out, especially just getting back into things, coming back from Christmas. Hopefully you guys had a amazing Christmas, holiday season, um, whatever you celebrate in your family. Hopefully it was great and everyone stayed safe. And you got to spend quality time with your loved ones. Um, I know I certainly did. And uh, we're getting back into it, right back in the 07. Um, we also have a couple motor builds coming up as well. If you have any more questions or more videos that you want covered in this style format, drop them in the comment section below. Give this one a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not already, guys. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.